Rita Moreno is a Puerto Rican actress who has won all four major American entertainment awards. She was the voice behind the criminal mastermind Carmen Sandiego from the show Where on Earth is Carmen Sandiego? In this video, we'll be taking a look at her life. Moving to New York and dubbing American films. Moreno was born in Puerto Rico to Francisco Alverio and Rosa Maria. Her father was a farmer and her mother a seamstress. Moreno moved to New York City with her mother when she was five years old. Marino's mother left her husband and her son behind in Puerto Rico. They lived in the villages of Valley Stream, New York, with Marino's mother's second husband, Edward Marino. Soon after moving to New York, Marino started taking dancing lessons with Paco Cancino, the paternal uncle of Rita Hayworth. She enjoyed dancing, but decided she wanted to be a movie star. She began her career by dubbing American films into Spanish. A few weeks before she turned 14, she performed in a Broadway play called Sky Drift at the Belasco Theater, meeting Louis B. Mayer. When Marina was 17, she caught the attention of a talent scout who arranged a meeting with Louis B. Mayer, the co-founder of MGM. Marina was thrilled as she had been trying to start a career in Hollywood since she was 11. In an interview, Marino said she went with her mother to the hotel where Mayer was staying while trying her best to look like her idol, Elizabeth Taylor. When she met Mayer, he said, wow, she looks like a Spanish Elizabeth Taylor. Upon hearing those words, Marino realized that she was starting a new life. She soon signed a seven-year contract with MGM. Singing in the Rain and Other Films Marino starred in a number of films throughout the 50s. She wasn't happy with the roles she was getting because most of them were stereotypical Latina roles. She said it was humiliating, embarrassing stuff. But I did it because there was nothing else. The only role she liked was Tuptum in The King and I. She had a supporting role in the 1952 musical Singing in the Rain, playing Zelda Zanders. Despite not having a lot of work during filming, she visited the set every day. When asked about Gene Kelly's famous dance scene in the film, she said she was surprised he didn't catch pneumonia because he had a fever of 103 and he had to perform outside. She also starred in the 1950 film The Toast of New Orleans. Two years after the release of Singing in the Rain, she was featured on the cover of Life magazine. Winning an Oscar and leaving Hollywood In 1961, she starred in the film adaptation of the Broadway musical West Side Story. She won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for her role in the film. She hoped she would get better roles after winning the Oscar, but to her disappointment, nothing changed. Even after winning the Oscar, she was offered stereotypical film roles. Feeling dejected and hopeless, she decided to take a break from Hollywood for seven years. The last film she did before she went into exile was Summer and Smoke. During her exile, she appeared in one film, the 1963 coming-of-age war film Cry of Battle, but it was filmed before she won the Oscar. Return to Hollywood and TV Appearances Marino ended her exile and returned to Hollywood in 1968. She starred in the film The Night of the Following Day, alongside Marlon Brando. She then appeared in the 1969 films Poppy and Marlowe. One of her biggest roles was the 1981 film The Four Seasons. Apart from Hollywood movies, Marino also starred in a lot of TV shows. She was one of the main cast members on the kids' show The Electric Company. She appeared on The Love Boat, the Cosby Show, George Lopez, The Golden Girls, and Miami Vice. For her appearance on The Muppet Show, she won a Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Individual Performance in a Variety or Music Program. She also starred in the 1982 sitcom 9 to 5. In the 90s, she voiced Carmen Sandiego on the show Where on Earth is Carmen Sandiego, one of the most popular animated shows in the world. For her role in the HBO show Oz, she won several ALMA awards. Her popularity in the Latino community. In a 2013 interview, Marino said that Latinos didn't write fan letters to stars in America, because of which she couldn't have been aware of the love people in the Latino community had for her. According to the comedian Liz Torres, on the night Marino won the Oscar for her performance as Anita, all the windows in the Spanish community of Harlem were open. Everyone had their TVs on. There was silence when Marino was announced as one of the nominees. When it was announced that she was the winner, everyone started shouting, Se la comio, my God, she made it, she did it. When Marino found out, she broke down in tears. She said people still call out to her in a Puerto Rican accent when they see her on the streets. EGOT, 
and other awards. Marino is one of the few stars who's won an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony. She is the first Latina woman to have won all four major awards. She was also given the Presidential Medal of Freedom, America's highest civilian honor, in 2004. She won the Oscar for her performance in West Side Story, the Grammy Award for the Electric Company album she made for the TV show The Electric Company, the Tony Award for her performance in The Ritz, and the Emmy for her appearance on The Muppet Show. In 2019, she received the Peabody Career Achievement Award. In 2015, she received a Kennedy Center Honors Lifetime Artistic Achievement Award. She has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and she was inducted into the California Hall of Fame in 2007. She also received the National Medal of Arts from former President Obama in 2009. In 1985, she appeared in a play called The Odd Couple and won the Sarah Sidens Award for it. She was invited by Bill Clinton to perform at his inauguration in 1993 and was also asked by him to perform at the White House. Love Life and Suicide Attempt Marino married her manager, Leonard Gordon, in 1965, and they remained together until Gordon died in 2010. Marino dated Marlon Brando for some time. It wasn't an easy relationship, as Brando frequently saw other women. She became pregnant and had to get an abortion, after which she was so heartbroken she tried to commit suicide by overdosing on sleeping pills. She talked about her suicide attempt in an interview, encouraging people to think about their family and reach out to other people for help if they've been contemplating suicide. She said, It is not something I did and wish I had, but it didn't even occur to me because I was so horribly miserable and all I could think of was my pain. What's your favorite film by Rita Marino? Let us know in those comments below and don't forget to press that subscribe button.